And you are listening to the Motherhood Unstressed Podcast, and I'm your host, Liz Carlisle. Welcome back. Welcome to a fresh week. And if this is the first time that you're tuning in, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here and that you have found the show and all of the amazing interviews that we have here. I hope you're already diving in and, and getting up to speed because there are just so many. I tell everyone I know, like each conversation I had has changed me uplifted me, educated me, made me more compassionate in some way because it's when we listen to others and what they've been through and what they know that we grow and that we become better versions of ourselves. So I know that's definitely happened with me and that's definitely happened with the listeners. And I think that's why this show has grown exponentially every single month. Um, We were actually number 61 in the U.S. last week, uh, which was unbelievable. I was so excited to see that. Um, because I love doing the show anyway, because I love talking with amazing people from all over the world and then sharing that with you and, uh, you know, uplifting you. Um, but when you see, you know, the, the product of all the hard work that you've put in, uh, right in front of you on the screen, um, you know, in a, in a chart form, it's really, it's kind of special, you know, it's, it's really cool to know that the work that you're putting out, that you put your heart and soul into is being received and received well. So thank you. And that's all due to you to listening to this right now. So thank you. Um, but to get to uh, the topic of the show today, I'm speaking with Dr. Benjamin Fuchs, and he is a pharmacist who has been compounding uh, prescriptions for doctors and their patients for over 35 years. And recently he started uh, his own skincare line called the Truth Treatment Systems. And his theory about skincare is based in science. Um, It's all about treating the skin cell, not just the skin and the stuff around the skin, as he says. So we talk all about how you actually make your skin healthier. And it's not uh, found in putting, you know, compounds based with water and wax on your skin, like so many other skincare lines have been doing for eons. Um, And so we talk about the science behind good skincare, what you can do to heal your skin, um, because our skin really is our largest organ in our body. Um, and it's not just about the products that you're putting on your face. It's about how you think. It's about the thoughts that you have, because thoughts turn into hormones, and that is a real impact on all of your body and all of the systems in your body. Um, and we also talk about the food that you put in your body and how that has an impact on your skin. Um, so we really cover a ton of topics, um, And I think that they're really going to help you understand the science behind true skincare and what you can do today to start making your skin look as beautiful as it can look. And uh, yeah, if you love this episode, please share it with a friend. Please hit those five stars on Apple Podcasts if you haven't already. And I love, love, love it when you guys share the episode uh, to your Insta stories and tag me at Motherhood Unstressed because I share it back out and I just love seeing the reaction to the episode. So if you would do that, I would so appreciate it. Love you guys. Enjoy the episode. This episode is sponsored by Motherhood Unstressed CBD. You can purchase our third-party tested organic USA grown hemp in stores across the country or at motherhoodunstressed.com. Hello, Ben. Welcome to the show. I am thrilled that you're here. I'm thrilled to talk about health and nutrition, especially in terms of skincare. Um, So before we jump all into all the goodies from this episode, why don't you take us back to the origin story? How you got into into natural pharmacology? Take us through where you are now. Okay. So it was like like parallel uh, parallel experiences that I had. One experience was I was an athlete and a bodybuilder and a weightlifter. So I kind of knew how to grow muscle. I, I studied how to grow muscle personally for me in my life because I was obsessed with being strong, you know, when I was a kid. So that's number one. So I studied how to grow muscle as a, on my personal, uh, I, I became an expert in how to grow muscle. I don't want to say an expert, but I developed an expertise in how to grow muscle in my personal life. That's, that was path number one. Path number two is I went to pharmacy school. And in pharmacy school, you study, we study drugs, we study medicines, but we also study how to make the body do things, how to control the body, how to hack into the body medicinally, but also nutritionally. Pharmacists study nutrition. Pharmacists study nutrition, not like a doctor or a dietitian or a nutritionist, but like a pharmacist. We study the medicinal properties of nutrition. We, because pharmacy is about medicine. So we study how vitamin A can be used to heal night blindness, how the B complex can be used to heal eczema. How vitamin C, how heart disease is a vitamin C deficiency, how joint disease involves essential fatty acid deficiency. 
You see what I'm saying? We're studying the therapeutic properties of what we call vitamins, minerals, and, and basically nutrients. So I'm, I'm studying nutrition. I'm studying how to build muscle on my own as a bodybuilder, as a weightlifter. And then I'm studying nutrition like a pharmacist. Like a pharmacist. I'm studying the healing properties of, of pharmacy. And then one day I was walking through the basement of the School of Pharmacy in uh, Boulder, Colorado, uh, and I smelt this pepperminty smell coming out of the, one of the rooms, and I got intrigued. Now go into this room, and there's this little old man. He's doing his little beaker thing and stirring things around. I look around; it's a really cool lab. And I was always a lab rat. I was always kind of a chem, you know, amateur. Chem- I loved chemistry, and so I start talking to him and I talk to him for half an hour. He's like, "Hey, you want to be my research assistant?" And I'm like, "Are you serious? You know, <laughs> are you kidding? Heck, yes." And so for that, that little room I walked into, that little lab I walked into with the pepperminty smell was the Blistex research facility. And that guy I talked to, the little old man, was Dr. Tony Jones, the guy who invented Blistex. Wow. And he, exactly, right? And so this is the basement of the School of Pharmacy in Colorado, in Boulder. And so for the next uh, three and a half years, almost four years, while my colleagues were off getting their internship hours, you know, pharmacy, you have to have internship hours. So everybody's getting their internship hours at Ludwig's Pharmacy and, you know, Kmart Pharmacy and this hospital and that nursing home, et cetera. I was getting my internship hours in the Blistex lab, <laughs> learning, learning from like a master how you make products and what emulsions are and what ingredients are and how you test products and pHs. And my job I had a lot of jobs, but one of my jobs was when I would first come into the, uh, after school, I would come into the, into the lab and Dr. Jones would have a stack of formulas and I was the guy who would have to make his formulas for him. Oh. So I learned, I learned how to make formulas from scratch from the, this total medicinal chemist genius. And so he taught me the concepts of how you, could he, how you can do things to the skin topically. And this is something that we pharmacists have an expertise in. Dr. Jones was a, a pharmacist. He was a medicinal chemist. He, he was a he was an extreme version. But all pharmacists have this kind of background in making products, including topical products. So I graduate pharmacy school. I've got this background in in growing muscle personally because I'm a bodybuilder and I know how to use nutrition and exercise to grow my muscles. And I, I have a proficiency in uh, vitamins and minerals and essential fatty acids and amino acids and dietary strategies for healing disease. And for working with uh, illness, and I got a background in skincare, and so I go to work at, in the farm in the pharmacy when I graduate, and I'm like, first thing I did was go to the skincare section mm-hmm. because I was I had known I had made products, but I was a guy. I was like 25 years old. I didn't know I didn't use moisturizers or wrinkle creams or acne creams or anything. So I didn't really know from a consumer standpoint what was going on in the world of skincare. I knew from a chemist standpoint, from a lab standpoint, from a manufacturer's, a formulator standpoint, I go to the, I go out to the aisles and I'm looking at the oil of Olay and the Nivea and, you know, the gold bond and whatever the products are. I'm looking at the ingredients and I'm like this, Oh my God, I can't believe they put that in there. Wow. And then I'm looking and I'm saying, there's nothing in here. It's just water and wax. How I was just blown away by what people were spending money on and what the state of the skincare world was like. And then on top of that, people are coming into my pharmacy and they're saying things like, Ben, no matter what I put on my skin, it's drier after I put my lotion than before. I, nothing's helping my eczema. My wrinkles are, no, I can't get rid of my fine lines. Every time I put my cream on, I get this reaction, that reaction. Mm-hmm. There was this sense of just frustration. Things didn't work. The skin, what do I do? They're buying 10 different products. They got 12 different moisturizers and all these different wrinkle creams. It's just frustration. So I'm hearing this over and over again. Now, some guy walks into my pharmacy one day, and he has got a condition called uh, alligator skin, concrete dermatitis. Mm-hmm. It's this, have you seen this? It's a terrible, uh-huh. it's an awful condition. And he's in pain, and he shows me his hands, and he was a construction worker. And uh, uh, I got this, in, he was been using stuff called bag balm for a cow's udders on his hand. And he said, Ben, can you help me? And I don't know what it was, but I got this inspiration. I got this aha moment, you know, yeah, just this epiphany. And I said, you know what? I'm going to make this guy something because I knew how to make stuff. And I had a background in it. And I, I kind of had some intuitions about what to do. I go in the back of the pharmacy. I make him up some stuff, put it in a, a jar. I don't even think anything of it. It's goopy. It's, it, you know, it doesn't look like much. It's in a <laughs> plain white jar. You know, it's got a typewritten label on it. And I just didn't think of it. I give it back. Two weeks later, he comes back. And his hands are not 100% improved, but they're probably 80% improved, wow. dramatically improved. And I'm like in my head thinking, damn, what did I, I just mixed a couple of this and that and mixed some stuff together. So then he comes back, he becomes a regular customer. He gets his own prescription. It, he has his own cream that he comes in for. It, pretty soon his, his doctor, he tells his doctor about it. Mm-hmm. His doctor starts calling me with other patients with skin problems. They're like, can you make this guy something for eczema, this guy something for acne, et cetera. Uh-huh. 
I started making things for this doctor. And then pretty soon other doctors in the little town I was working at were calling the pharmacy. I started making things. I became the pharmacist who makes things. And, and this was back in the early, this was in the ni- uh, late 80s, late 1980s. And so this idea of pharmacists making things was still pretty weird. Yeah. Nobody ever, you know, we heard of it, right? And, but it was working. And I developed a whole book of formulas that worked for people's skin problems. Mm. And so uh, I was like, I was doing this for Albertson's Pharmacy. And I'm thinking, I did this for a while, probably six months. And I'm thinking, why am I doing this for Albertson's Pharmacy? I'm going to start my own damn pharmacy. And that's exactly what I did. I started a wound healing pharmacy where I specialized in making products for people's damaged skin or rashy skin or pre-surgical skin or post-surgical skin or burnt skin or whatever. I created products they were on a prescription basis for specific patients. And I developed this whole book of formulas that worked for specific patients so well that they were coming to get refills. And in the world of pharmacy, I'm not playing games. I'm dealing with somebody who's got a trauma. I can't, I, Cindy Crawford endorsing the product doesn't matter to somebody who's got a burn. You know, the, the smell of it, that, the criteria that everybody uses to make products, that was not relevant to me. My criteria was, that's my patient. I'm looking him in the eye. He's counting on me. I got to make him something that works. It's a whole different world than cosmetics. But what I noticed was when people would come back from their refills, not only would their wounds be better, but their skin would look better mm. entirely. So the, the burn might, would be starting to heal, but the whole skin started to look better. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. The same things I'm doing to heal the skin are what you want in a beauty product. The healing process is exactly the same as the beautification process, as the anti-wrinkle process, as the anti-aging process, as the moisturizing process, so that wound healing is the same thing. So I said, well, why aren't I going to start selling my, I'm going to take these wound healing products that I know work so well, people are coming in for refills and it's taking care of their, sometimes insurance companies were paying for this stuff and I'm going to turn them into beauty products. And that's exactly what I did. I took my wound healing formulations and not even the formulations, the concepts. I developed concepts for how you heal wounds topically. And the concepts involve things like using certain vitamins, using high concentrations, using the nutrients in certain forms, taking out all the bullshit, excuse my French, the, the, uh, you know, the stuff that you don't need. I was creating products that you only put one drop of or two drop of, like you take a medicine. I'm thinking right. medicine. I'm thinking skincare should be medicine. And that's what the truth is. And that's why I call my company the truth. Because the truth is you don't need water. You don't need wax. You don't need emulsifier. You don't need preservative. But women, especially, but everybody, but especially women, have been conditioned to believe that the, stat, the standard for assessing how good a product is, is, oh, that feels good. Oh, that looks good. Or even worse, that smells good. Right. Or oh, the movie star endorsed it. Those are criteria that are used by marketing companies because they can't make products that work. My criteria is, does it work? If that isn't going to make a difference on your skin in one or two doses, like medicine makes a difference on your bladder infection or, or on your hypertension or whatever it is, if, it's not, if your skincare product is not, doesn't have medicinal properties that are going to create changes in the skin without being medicine, without being drugs, that's a baloney product. And for the most part, most products are, not for the most part, for the complete part, I'm, and I hate to say it because everybody's got their favorites, but from my standpoint as a formulator and an ingredient guy, they're all baloney. They're, they're based in this concept of you take a shell that's made of emulsifier and water and silicon and oil and preservative and fragrance, and you put a drop of your favorite herb in it, or you drop your favorite moisturizer, or you drop your favorite bologna, and you sell bologna cream, peptide cream, vitamin C cream, blah, blah, blah cream. And all it is is a crappy shell that you're paying for that okay. has nothing to do with your skin and a little drop of something. So what I did is I took that all out and I left behind just the active ingredient with something to drive it in, a transdermal penetrant. I turned that shell into a, a bullet so that I put, I load it with active material and then it goes into the skin. So all my products are 100% active and functional, no baloney in them. And you only use one or two drops. And the net effect is you get healing as much as you get beauty. So you can use my transdermal C serum on your baby's diaper rash. That's incredible. Exactly. And I'll tell you what, if you can't put your wrinkle cream on your baby's diaper rash and have it heal the diaper rash, it ain't a wrinkle cream. It's a baloney product. And so that, and that's the stat, that's the criteria I use. Can you use that product to heal your skin with? Is that product going to be soothing on a burn? Is that product going to make a difference at a very, very tiny dose? Because we always say the skin is the body's largest organ. Yeah. Right. But do we treat it like an organ? Heck no. We go like this. 
rub stuff on there. I don't care what's in there. Ma'am, do you know what's in that on the ingredient deck there? Have you read it? Oh, I don't know. You know? But that's the thing. Like so many people don't really look at the ingredients, especially if all the marketing on the front is saying, this is all natural. This is their, get it. Oh, this is marketing. Those aren't your friends. You think that marketers is how can I help keep Liz happy? Mm -hmm. How can I make Liz very healthy and her skin really be, you're not thinking that they're thinking, how can I sell more of this wrinkle cream? All natural, organic. What the heck? Who cares if it's all natural? Poison ivy's natural. Is that a poison <laughs> ivy cream? You tell me I'm going to rub poison ivy on me? That's all natural. It's organic, poison ivy. Who cares? So why do you think more people haven't, you know, with your expertise, there's people who went to school just like you. Why do you think there hasn't because been a there's, push? there's a higher form of intelligence, and there's a lot of intelligence out there. A lot of smart people. I'm not even that smart, to tell you the truth. There's a lot of smart people out there. There's one form of intelligence that's above mental intelligence or thinking, and that's called intuition. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Intuition is how you know when your kid, as a mother, how you know when something's wrong with your kid. That's not knowledge. That's intuition. You follow me? Mm-hmm. It comes from into, like we see into. Intuition is a higher form of intelligence. For whatever reason, I got the intuition to combine certain strategies that I knew were important for bodybuilding with certain strategies that I knew were important for therapy, with certain strategies that I learned from Blistex and from, from being a medicinal chemist, with magic, with just God, you know, with whatever you want to call it. And I brought it all together. And because these four elements or these four parallel tracks are, are personal to me, it's like a perfect storm of understanding. And then to top it all off, I got to do clinicals. I, in my pharmacy, I got to see what worked. Right. I got to actually tweak things and, and polish things up and refine things. So between all of these skill sets, I don't know why anybody's doing it, but I'll tell you what, Liz, I, you haven't used my products, I don't think, yet. Not but yet. We'll you, send you some, you'll see. Or get on and do the, check the, review, the reviews out. It's not, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, right? I can give you all kinds of theory and concepts, and I love theory. I'm a scientist uh, from the get-go. First thing in the morning, I'm reading something about chemistry or about biology or about biochemistry or, or even about spirituality, because by the way, spirituality is a big part of what I do. You know, this is not just a physical, healing is not just a physical a, a, a process. It's a mental process. It's an emotional process. And it's a spiritual process as well. And I'm a healer. That's my job is to help heal people. I'm not a skincare person and I'm not a nutritionist. I'm a healing person. And I work with skin because I'm healing the skin. I work with nutrition because I'm healing. I'm using nutrition to heal uh, as a heal, part of my healing practice. So I look at this as part of healing, part of health. Mm-hmm. It's all, this is all about health. I don't know that people, very many people have a skill set that that's, that's that varied. Very Pharmacy, true. medicine, herbs, chemistry, healing, spirituality, mentality, emotion, all of those things that I bring together are unique to me. And that's why I said when we start talking, the ideas I talk about on my radio program and I'm talking about with you here and in my presentations, are they're not off the internet. You're not going to get what I say off the internet because I didn't get it from the internet. I didn't get it from a book. I got it from a confluence of bringing together of multiple uh, tracks of information that are personal to me. So nobody's doing what I'm doing. But you know what, my dear? It's only a matter of time. It's only because I'm not doing anything. Because they're going to see that it's working and it's actually healing people and they're coming. Exactly. 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 You know, uh, Albert, they asked, Thomas Edison, one time they asked Thomas Edison, or no, Walt Disney. They said, aren't you afraid of people stealing your ideas? And Walt Disney said, I can think up ideas much faster than anybody can steal them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, and that's kind of how I look at it. You know, yeah, I know there's people out there who are going to steal, but I got more. There's way right, more right. ideas, right? So I got I'm endless curious ideas. Though, like you do seem very, you, I mean, you're very intuitive. I mean, you're very spiritual. Have you always been that way? Have you always like listened to the whispers in your life? Because it seems like you have just yeah. found this path of success well, effortlessly. I, praise God. Okay. I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to say that, you know, so I'm very, <laughs> very quiet about my skill set. You know, except for I want to sell product. I don't want, I don't want to, you know, uh, I, pride cometh before a fall as uh, you know, I, so I call preventive humility. You want to be <laughs> humble, humble first before the universe, which has many ways to humble you. Right, right, you, know, right. Okay. Right? you want to be humble first. So I don't even want, but I do have that skill set. No, you know what I attribute it to, and this is really good. And, and this should be inspiring for other people, a bad childhood. Mm. Why? Because when you have a bad childhood, you learn to listen, 
to see things, to notice things because your survival depends on it. So not my, per, not my physical survival, but my psychic survival, my, my emotional survival, my psychological survival depended on me actually navigating and seeing how to turn left and turn right and to listen to what you call the voice, the whisper, the still small voice. We all have a still small voice. We just don't listen to it, but we all have it, right? You know, it's like, like, I don't know what your particular vice is. Say you like Snickers bars or, you know, <laughs> or chocolate. I don't know what your vice is, but whatever it is, say, let's say you say Snickers bars, right? What right. is your vice? What, what is your I favorite? can definitely put down some chocolate. Yes. Okay, good. All right. So let's say <laughs> next time you have your favorite Snicker, your favorite chocolate. Okay. We'll call Snickers bar. You take the Snickers bar and you hold it up and then you open it really slowly. And as you're opening it, you like pull up the candy uh, out of the wrapping a little bit. And as you're doing that, listen very closely and you hear, you'll hear a voice go, no, <laughs> <laughs> right. Am I right? Liz, it's, am I right? Is there, is there, <laughs> guess what? We all have it. Everybody <laughs> has it. Every human being has it because that's what this, whatever you want to call it, God, the force, or however you want to call it, put that in us. We all have that still small voice. And so much of success, as you call it, or understanding how the skin works or our bodies work or how the world works, how reality works, is listening to that still mm-hmm. small voice and paying attention to it instead of, you know, like we said, you're laughing. You say, you hear it. What do you say? Oh, shut up. And you eat the, the, you eat right, the right. thing anyway, right? That's what we all do. But instead of doing that, respecting that still small voice. I once took the Bible, you know, I like the Bible. That's kind of like my little thing is to read the Bible. And I noticed something. If you put still small voice, wherever Christ talks about himself, it works. Wow. If you, if I be lifted up, I shall lift up all things with me. If the still small voice is lifted up, it will lift up all things with me. I am the truth, the light, and the way. The still small voice is the truth, the light, and the way. I mean, you can do it with everything. It's almost like it's an exact correlation. Right. And so you don't even have to read the Bible as a Christian. You can just read the Bible for intuition as a way of elevating intuition and using intuition. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It's it's such a beautiful book. That's why it's so magnificent is because it doesn't say you don't believe in Christ or you don't believe in the story. That's fine. But just plug in intuition. Mm-hmm. into that or there's still small voice wherever he talks about himself and it works the same way so yeah. you know that I, I believe and that's really my personal mission is to awaken people to their inner power i mm-hmm. yes i do skin i help people with health challenges via nutrition but really it's all about tapping into their inner power which is why my skincare products my active ingredients are always in your body they're already ah. in your body i select active ingredients that are already in your skin my most important active ingredients are already in your skin because I'm honoring you. I'm honoring your skin. This isn't about me. This is about your skin. I'm not doing anything. I'm just feeding the skin so it can do it itself. You so see the difference? The skin, what does the skin really need to heal and then ultimately get even better? Well, in order to understand that, you've got to understand what the skin is. Okay. There's two components. The skin is made up of a lot of parts, but there's two major components or classes of components. And in fact, in the whole body, there's only two classes of components. There's, obviously, there's thousands and millions of different things, but there's only uh, two classes or categories of components that form the body and that form the various organs of the body. In the body and the various organs, including the skin, the body's largest organ, and we really do want to think, of, uh, it takes a lot of, a lot of uh, imagination to really understand this is an organ, Liz. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at it. Does that look like an organ? Come on. That doesn't yeah. look like an organ. Not at all. Not at all, right? But it's an organ. Like your liver, your spleen, or your lungs. Or, yeah. But you got to take a leap to really mm-hmm. see it as an organ. So what is it that composes organs? What are the two categories that compose organs or the body? Well, the body and these organs are built like raisin bread. If you looked at it with a correct microscope and you looked at it close, it would have a lot of similarities to raisin bread. In the same vein as there's two components in raisin bread, what are the two components in raisin bread? Bread and raisins. Hello, right? Obviously, <laughs> bread and raisins. But, but so what does it mean that the body is raisin bread? There's no bread and raisins in the body. Instead of bread and raisins, the raisins are called cells, and the bread is called extracellular tissue, or I call it stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay? Just to extracellular tissue, technically, but we'll call it stuff or extracellular matrix. Have you heard that term? Extracellular no. matrix? All right, so there's a cell, and there's the stuff around the cell. Okay? When we're sick, whether we have cancer, or whether we have uh, heart disease, or whether we have autoimmune problems, or whether we have any physical health condition, 
or skin condition, whether it's eczema, psoriasis, or old skin, or dry skin, or whatever your skin condition is, whenever we have anything going wrong in the body, the problem is at the level of the cell, not the stuff. Hmm. This is extremely important that we understand this. We got to start to address the cell, not the stuff. Where do you think your skincare products work? On the stuff, yeah. we treat the stuff, not the cell. This is the mm-hmm. secret that I learned from being a pharmacist is that the, the, the nexus, the, the leverage point for control over health of the health of the body or the health of the skin is at the level of the cell, not the stuff. All disease, it's huge. Yeah. All disease is cell disease, but we treat the stuff, not the cell. Our skincare treats the stuff, not the cell. You see, the cell... It's this amazing thing. We, I mean, I, one of my dreams in life is to have everybody love the cell as much as me. I mean, this should be on the cover of the New York Times and every newspaper we, there, that's out there is that we have 100 trillion cells. Each one of those cells is no smaller or no larger than a 1 100th, or, or I shouldn't say no large, but around on average the size of 1 100th uh, head of a pin, mm-hmm. microscopically small, but it has millions of working parts that are constantly shape shifting and changing every split second. This thing that's 1 100th the size of the head of a pin is capable of producing tens to hundreds of thousands of molecules every split second, rearranging itself and adjusting to its environment and changing the genetics. There's, uh, there's, billions and billions of miles of d- DNA stuffed inside each cell. If you add up all the, ce- all the DNA and all the cells of the body, there's more working parts than a 747, than a Boeing 747 that are constantly changing. I mean, this thing's magnificent. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you had to think about that, you, can even, you can't even comprehend it in your right. imagination. Somehow it's on automatic. Somehow right. all that's on automatic because the cell has been around for f- three and a half billion years. And in that three, and the cells, by the way, of a of a frog's ta- of frog's of a pig's tail or a frog's belly or a fish's gizzard is the same, basically, as the cell of your heart or the cell of your brain. They're all basically the same. They have slight differences, but basically they have the same functionality. That's why they, when they do cells, studies on cells, they can take a cell from a, the belly of a fish and and assess what's happening for your heart. Mm. for your brain because a cell is a cell is a cell and these cells have been around for three and a half billion years and in that three and a half billion years they know what they like they know what they need they have a menu from which they eat from and mm. it turns out that when we're sick there's something disturbing either the the uh, the cell's ability to incorporate that menu or that menu's not there it's missing yeah. something and one of the things that happens when the cell is not getting the, the menu the food it needs which we call nutrition by the way vitamins and minerals, amino acids and fatty acids, one of the things that happens is it goes to sleep. It turns off. It, we say in biochemistry, it down regulates. Mm. It's because it doesn't have the nutrients that right. it needs to do its work. So conversely, and this is my intuition, conversely, if you flood the cell, saturate the cell with the resources it needs to make tissue, to uh, beat your heart, to build the immune system, to do all of the things it does, contract if it's a a muscle cell or beat if it's a heart cell or immune if it's an immune cell or make stuff if it's a skin cell. If you flood that cell with the raw materials, just like when it's missing them, it goes to sleep. When you flood them, it goes, yippee, yay, I, I hit the jackpot. I can, go <laughs> make, I can go make things. I can do things. I, if I'm a heart, I can beat. If a heart cell, I can beat. If I'm a gallbladder cell, I can make bile or I can uh, secrete bile. If I'm an intestinal cell, I can digest food. If I'm a brain, yay. And the key or one of the major keys to being healthy is to saturate the cell with the nutrients it needs. What we do in the medical model as a pharmacist is we, if the cell is sleeping or the cell is not doing its business correctly or something's going wrong with the cell, we take the cell out. Right. Or we or we poison the cell, or we electrocute the cell, or we shoot X-rays at the cell. When all the cell wants is a little bit of food, it wants the nut- nutrition. And so, what I discovered was is there's ways to do this for the skin that are analogous to what you do inside your body when you eat food and take supplements. In, inside the body, you want to load the body with nutrition. That's why you got to eat correctly. 
you got to eat nutrient dense and you got to do nutritional supplements. But what I discovered is you can do the same thing for skin cells topically that you want to do for the liver or the heart or the brain or any other cell internally. Wow. You can flood the skin, but not just that there's a certain, it's not that cut and dry because the skin is a barrier. The skin doesn't allow you to get things through and the cells are deep. Even though this doesn't look like it's very deep, I mean, it doesn't look like it has a lot of depth, right? I mean, if you look at your skin, it doesn't look like there's a lot of depth, but there is really. And from a microscopic or cellular perspective or molecular perspective, the cell is deep, way deep. So if we're going to feed the cell topically, the way we feed the cell internally when we eat and it goes into our bloodstream, we got to figure out how to bypass the skin as a barrier. We got to figure out how to take advantage of somehow portals or openings mm -hmm. in the skin so we can get things down. And this is a skill set pharmacists specialize in. Hmm. We specialize in getting things through the skin. In fact, if you go to the farm, if you go to the pharmacy and you have, uh, you want some, uh, take care of menopausal symptoms, they'll give you an estrogen cream or a progesterone cream. Or if you go on a cruise and you're dizzy or you get nauseous, they'll put a little patch in the back of your ear called a scopolamine patch. Or if you're in a really chronic pain, they'll put a patch on your arm, a fentanyl patch or a lidocaine patch. Somehow to get the, we use the skin as a route right. of administration into the body. So what I did is I knew that there were cells here. I knew that if we fed the cells with certain things, drowned the cell, saturated the cell, immersed the cell in abundant resources, we could get the cell to wake up and could do things. And so I thought to myself, what is it that we, how is it that I'm going to bypass this barrier? And I came up with certain strategies and some I made up and some I got from pharmacy school to bypass this, the, the skin. And I put the key nutrients for skin cells in these, these uh, formulation systems and just packed it. And the two most important vitamins for the skin are vitamin for skin cells are vitamin C and vitamin A mm -hmm. by far nothing's even close. So wow. I loaded up, I loaded up my uh, products with vitamin C and vitamin A, put them in a bullet, uh, uh, a, uh, biochemical, ana biochemical analogous bullet. In other words, a, a, a structure, a chemical structure that was very similar to your skin. So your skin would accept it. You mean and not water and wax. <laughs> exactly. Not water and wax. Exactly. <laughs> I looked for what was in the skin. I put the stuff in there and I shaped the the bullet around the vitamin C and the vitamin A and the hyaluronic acid and the peptides and a few other ingredients. And I created, this is, this was my strategy. I created a formulation that was nothing but a bullet with the skin cells, favorite nutrients. The bullet pulls the skin cells, favorite nutrients into the tissue. Boom. The cell, the, the uh, vitamin C and the vitamin A and the peptides or the um, uh, polyelectrolytes surround the cell. The cell now upregulates itself. Now, what I just told you is very esoteric theory, very esoteric formu uh, formulation theory, but it doesn't matter because the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Put my omega-6 healing cream on your baby's diaper rash. Put mm -hmm. it on a cutter scrape. Put it on your skin. Put it on your face as a uh, skin hydrator. Put my transdermal C serum on your, on your face as an anti-wrinkle product or on your lips. Watch what happens in one or two days or right. sometimes even in one or two doses. What will happen is not because of me, though. This is not me. This is you. All I'm doing is putting the stuff the skin cell needs in the products and in your skin and proximal to your skin cell so you can do the work. Your skin cell can do the work. This is about honoring you, honoring your biochemistry, honoring your skin cells and the health of, the health of your particular tissue. I'm just using strategies that came from, like I say, all these different parallel tracks plus my own intuition plus my own experience. Right. All of these complicated things. I mean, your life experience, pharmacy school, all of that, all of that right, very complicated stuff on an even more complicated body system. But at the yes. same time, because that system is automated, it's almost like it clicks. It works so easily. It's automatic. Praise God. It's automatic. Every time you cut yourself, do you have to think about healing? Right. It just heals on its own. That's the testimony to the built-in life force and intelligence that we all have. Our job is to feed it. I'm just giving my patients the opportunity to leverage, to optimize, to maximize the feeding of those cells. Once you buy this theory, once you understand this theory, you're not going to want to use anything but. Well, exactly. Exactly. I mean, after speaking with you, I mean, I think the movement is happening. People are moving more towards real ingredients. We're tired of the bullshit. Like, it's, yes. you know, the stink movie came out with all like the fragrance and, and yes. all, how, how terrible that is for everyone. Yes. So I think is there a movie are, called stink? Is there really a movie? Called yeah. Stink? On Netflix. It's a documentary. Awesome. I have to watch that. 
yeah. You know those that those there are these stores, Beth. That uh, they're called a, like a Victoria. I forgot what they're called Bath and Body Works or something. Yes. Those are the most deadly stores you could ever walk into. Yes. That is pure cancer, poison. It, pure poison in one room. Those poor yeah. people that work there. Yeah. Yes, those those fragrances, the chemicals that are in, in skincare products that people rub on their skin like without thinking. I used to wear a glove and masks. When I had to dip into the sunscreen or mm-hmm. dip into the preservative or dip into the surfactants, I would wear masks so I didn't breathe the stuff and gloves. That's the same stuff we're rubbing on. Our, you Very likely you or your friends are rubbing on their skin. Yeah, it's and that's a, that leads to another question. What is your opinion on sunblock? Is it worth all of the metals? Zinc, o- the- zinc oxide. Do uh-huh. not use a sunscreen if you can avoid it. Okay. Use zinc oxide. Zinc oxide. Do not use a sunscreen if you can avoid it. I okay. mean, sometimes you can't avoid it if you're like in, you know, Mexico and you're going to burn and your only option is to burn. Use a low SPF okay. and reapply and get it off your skin as fast as possible when you don't need it. And don't use products that force you to use a sunscreen. There are like eye uh-huh. creams that have sunscreen yeah, yeah, in them. Yeah. If you don't need a sunscreen, don't wear it. If you can avoid it, don't wear it. I mean, if you can use a sunblock instead, do that. Uh, and even, especially in your babies, never use a sunscreen yeah. in your babies, but even, nobody should use one at all. They're nasty, nasty chemicals. And the sunscreen manufacturers hate when I say that, but you know what? Now Hawaii, I've been saying for 25 years, almost 30 years. When I was in my pharmacy, the first, I used to have to fill prescriptions for sunscreens. Doctors would write prescriptions for sunscreens. Ah. And so when I ordered them, they would have a skull and crossbones on them. I'd be like, I'm going to put that in here, a skull and cross. It has a, it's poison. I'm going to put it in there. So I did it for a little bit, but then I was like, there's no way. And I started to develop Incredible. zinc oxide formulations. Yes, exactly. Wow. Exactly. And they tell you, oh, you need, a, you know what? Skin cancer is going up. It's not going down. Melanoma is going up. It's not going down. Skin cancer is not skin cancer. Here's a, this is not skin related, but I'll tell you this. Breast cancer, uterine cancer, brain cancer, skin cancer, bone cancer. They're not bone. There's no such thing as bone cancer. There's no such thing as breast cancer. There's no such thing as uterine cancer. There's no such thing as ovarian cancer. There is ovarian cell cancer. Mm -hmm. There is breast cell cancer. There is skin cell cancer. This idea that we're treating the organ and not the cell is why the medical model fails us because the, see the cell doesn't need medicine. There's no medicine that the cell needs. None. Zippo. Nada. There's no medicine that the cell needs. So they don't want you thinking about the cell. They got you thinking about the breast and the ovaries and the skin. You want to think about the cell. And then you realize the cell just needs food. It needs a clean place to do its work. And it needs some oxygen. That's it. There's no drugs on the cell's menu. That menu I was telling you about, that 3.5 billion year old menu, ain't no uh, beta blockers on that menu. There's no calcium channel blockers on that menu. There's no antihypertensives or diuretics on that menu. Those all poison the cell. Right. If we want to, if we want to be healthy, we've got to feed the cell, oxygenate the cell, and give the cell a clean place to do its work. So skin cancer is skin cell cancer. It's a cell, and this is what all cancers are, cells that are under duress. Mm-hmm. They're freaked out. They don't know what else to do. So they just say, screw it. I'm not going to become a liver. I'm not going to become bone. I'm going to divide on my own. You see, for us to have skin and and livers and organs, uh, various organs, the cells have to cooperate. They have to give up their own personal life for the life of the liver. Do you understand what I'm saying? They can know, they have to, uh, a a liver cell has lost its independence. It's like Jesus. It kind of gives of itself for the good of the liver for the good of the community, but it needs to have raw materials to do that. If it doesn't have the raw materials to do that, eventually it's like, you know what? Forget it. I'm not going to be a liver. I'm just going to divide on my own. Wow. I'm not, I'm not going to make all the chemistry. I'm not going to make anything that they need. I'm just going to, they don't care about me. I don't care about them. And so it goes and divides on its own. That's a cancer cell. Mm-hmm. A cancer cell is a cell that's no longer going to be a liver or a skin or a bone or, or a kid or whatever it is, a, wherever, uh, a brain, wherever this, the cell has given up its life to become that organ. It's not doing that anymore. It divides on its own. So what do we do? We kill it. We say we punish it. All it's doing is trying to survive. Right. It's just trying to get by. And so it starts, to, it starts to behave in a very primitive way, in a sociopathic way in a way where he doesn't care about the community. So for skin cancer, we blame the sun, 
blame our lousy lie, our, our state of nutrition, blame our toxicity in our body, mm -hmm. blame the lack of oxygen and the lack of movement. The sun triggers things. It's yeah. an, it amps things up. So if you already have a system that's in duress, you already have a cell that's in duress and now you trigger it. Now you make it work even further. You're going to increase the likelihood of cancer, but don't blame the sun. The sun loves you. The sun is one of the greatest gifts there is that God gave us. The sun has got gives us vitamin D. It gives us life. Everything we do when we eat food is to get the sun. The sun actually is converted into electrical energy in your skin. We're like solar beings. We get, our, we get the energy to move from the sun. We feel better in the sun. Our immune system functions more effectively in the sun. Everything's better in the sun. And we got these nutcases who run the medical model who are telling us, stay out of the sun, right. avoid the sun. And everybody knows they feel better when they're in the sun for a little bit. Oh, now. you feel it. You yeah, feel of it. Of course you feel it. Now, you don't want to burn. Right. You don't want to burn. You want to be careful. It's because it amps things up. It revs things up. But a little bit of sun is very important, way better for you than sunscreen. And by the way, if you really want to make a sunscreen toxic, put it out in the sun. Oh, God. They become, they become more toxic when they're out in the sun. So yeah. there, there's so much craziness out there. And by the way, the best sun protection is internal nutrition, vitamin C, uh. vitamin E. What, is, what lives in the sun all day long and never gets wrinkles or skin cancer? plants <laughs> exactly okay, yeah. exactly exactly Wait, so eat your, the spot, ben. <laughs> well you answered it perfectly eat your veggies yeah. eat your reds eat your blues eat your greens here's a trick for you you want a little trick vitamins for your eyes you know how you go to the health food store you can get vitamins for your eyes like ocuvite or or uh Ocutive. they have various eye vitamins those are the best ways to protect your skin from the sun Mm -hmm. The same nutrients, the zinc and the sulfur and the vitamin E and the vitamin C that are in your, and the phytonutrients, the carotenes that are in the eye vitamins will protect your skin from the sun. That's amazing. Isn't it? And, so so, and when you don't know this, they don't know so many things. That's why I do what I do. And if you've got on YouTube and you know, did your due diligence, I'm much more than, I'm not here just to sell skincare products. I'm selling skincare products because you need these, these skincare products. This is my sales pitch when I think of doing a sales pitch for uh, my skincare. <laughs> and I never say this, but this is my sales pitch in my head. Mm -hmm. Are you crazy? You gotta use, why are you using anything but the truth? Mm -hmm. what, what are you thinking? Now I never say that, of course, but I, <laughs> but I think it in my head because yeah. why would you put anything else but the truth on your, on your skin? It's like, yeah, have you ever heard the term medical grade? Yeah. Right, well, guess what? There's no such thing as medical grade. It's what? a made up. You think there's like a commission of medical grade that looks at a product, medical grade, not medical grade, medical grade. There's no, there's no commission that stamps something medical grade. It's made up. It's wow. created whole cloth. So what I tell people, people say, are your products medical grade? So this is what I say. No, my products aren't medical grade. They're medicine. Mm, they're, med not? they're medicine. Exactly. They're not medical grade. They're medicine. You want to, you want to be putting something on your skin that acts the way medicine acts. Like, quickly at a small dose with potency and with real effects. What's the one thing you want your antibiotic to do when you go to the drugstore? One thing, oh, work. What's the one thing you want your skin product to do? Work. And not make it worse, not make your skin worse. Well, yeah, so. you want it to do what you're telling, only what you want it to do. Right. Work. Skincare needs to be treated like medicine, in my humble opinion. And the more we start to understand ingredients, the more we understand formulation and formulation science and technology, the more we understand the body, the more we understand this, the nature of the cell, oh. the, more we, the more we understand the still small voice, all the things we just talked about. Uh, the more we understand all of these things, the more we'll be able to leverage all the beauty that's in our world and all the magnificence that's in our body. And that's my mission in life. Yeah, that is such a great way. I just want to end, um, almost end on that because I was going to ask you, you know, what's your biggest takeaway for the listener right now? And I think that that is such a perfect summary of what you are all about, what your product is all about. You know, your soul has just completely come through and what you care about and the work that you're doing. Like it's, you're not selling it. You're just speaking the truth as it is. I mean, and it the is truth. like you hear, you know, when you hear the truth and it's like, yeah, you're, you're, it resonates because you yes. know it's yes. right. Like that's yes. what I feel right now speaking. Thank you. you. Everything Thank you. you said is, it means a lot to me. Well, yeah, I mean, based in science, real yeah. science, not like let's fund this study and get the science that we want. 
Um, and it's logic. There's logic. You don't have to be a rocket exactly. science. You don't exactly. have to be a genius. It's right. not complicated. That's that's the biggest take home message I want people to understand. I'm interested in helping people with their their bodies, their spiritual bodies, their mental bodies, their emotional bodies, and their physical bodies. And the phys- biggest message I want to take, I want people to take home, is it's not complicated. Mm-hmm. Don't overthink it and don't be overwhelmed by fancy ideas and fancy concepts. Albert Einstein said, if you can't explain something so that a kindergarten kid understands it, you didn't understand it yourself. So it should be that kind. Kind of had that kind of resonance to you that it's simple like the sky is blue like like uh, like uh, the ocean is uh is big it should be just simple common sense ideas if you're you understand that your body is made up of cells and stuff and you want to be healthy you address the cells figure out what do the cells need that's yeah, all that's it what do the cells need what do they want that's all and don't forget of course you know we didn't talk about it but it's very important as you as you a man thinketh in his heart so is he so your heart will affect your skin. Love affects your skin. Forgiveness affects your skin. Uh, jealousy affects your skin. Rage affects your skin. Depression affects your skin. Joy affects your skin. These are airy fairy kind of ideas. You know, they're not really yeah. super tangible. But guess what? Every time you think a thought or feel a feeling, it gets turned into a hormone, which gets turned into your body. That's science. It's not. Yeah. This is not hippie talk. This is actual biochemistry. When you think a thought or feel a feeling that's good, you make a good hormone, you make a good body. When you think of uh, uh, have a feeling or a thought that's not good, you make cortisol and stress hormones and anger hormones, your body starts to deteriorate. So learn to leverage those aspects of well-being and don't forget about you know whatever spirituality means to you. Everybody's got their own take on it. Whatever that is, incorporate that aspect of bigness, of of intelligence, divine intelligence somehow into your life. And all of that plays off in, in, in the most mundane of, of issues like, for, like acne or dry skin to the most serious and sublime issues, cancer and autoimmune mm-hmm. diseases and heart disease and, and diabetes. It's all things that we have remarkable amounts of control over. And we, it's not that complicated. Don't overthink and respect the amount of power that you have over your skin and over your body by your life choices, the choices you make in your life. And that should hopefully include using high concentrations of active ingredients that the skin recognizes, vitamin C and vitamin A, which you can, of course, find at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. I love it. I love it. So I do have some rapid fire questions I always yes. end with if you're ready. Okay. Beautiful skin is? Healthy. Mm. I'm grateful for? Um, God. Hmm. And what's something that you've learned in life that you wish someone would have told you earlier on? All is well. Oh, I love that. Thank That's you. Awesome. Well, you're a wise woman, Liz. I can't believe you're so young. You're on the ball. You're, you're no, on the I've ball. I've been flooding my cells. I've been flooding my cells with good Doesn't stuff. that make sense? To flood your cells, drown yeah. your cells. You have been listening to the Motherhood Unstressed Podcast, and I'm your host, Liz Carlisle. If you found any kind of value out of this conversation today, please share us on your Instagram stories, tag us at Motherhood Unstressed, and hit those five stars. It literally takes five seconds to do that, and you will feel so good for uh, giving back to the show if we have given anything to you. Have a great week. Love you guys.